able to hop on. The kids' spring break kind of put a little bit of a niche in it for me last week. <laughs> but, you know, you got to just roll with it sometimes. You just got to roll with it. Um, so I'm so excited that I was able to hop on today. I have um, something that I want to share with you because it's something that I realized was happening with me and um, been seeing it come up a lot in a lot of the... Um, the Bible apps that I've been reading and some in a book that I'm reading right now that I'm going to share with all of you in a little bit. Um, so I figure if this is something that's happening to me, then I bet this is something that's happening to a whole lot of you. Um, and just so you guys know, for some of you that are on here that don't really know me, I love interaction. So feel free to unmute yourself and let's all share because I think that that's how we really all learn from each other is to share. So um, by all means, if you want to chat, just unmute um, yourself and let's get some great conversation going. Um, so for me, what I've noticed lately, um, I had attended Elise's retreat in Florida where she had talked to us about journaling, um, about um, reading the Bible, about, you know, getting close spiritually and getting closer to God and, and what that looks like. So um, when we left Florida, we all got very, very um, into journaling. We started following um, the Bible apps and all that kind of great stuff. I already was spiritual and already had um, um, religious, it, 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 you know, in me. I was already going to church. I already led a women's life group and, and all that kind of great stuff. But, you know, Elise has a way of making you, you know, dive deeper into areas that maybe you weren't in some of us. So uh, that's something that we definitely did. And then um, Blair had come here to Florida and we talked a little bit about it more. So we, we dove in a little deeper. So I can tell you um, what I've noticed. And it's interesting because I had this discussion with my husband this morning, because now that I have been doing more of this, and just so you know, ladies, for some of you that are out there that may be like me, where um, you have this spiritual walk going on in your house, but maybe it's not with your husband um, or with your significant other. That's the way it was with me. Um, and my husband kind of noticed a difference in me and um, the way that I was acting differently and speaking differently. And it got him a little curious and kind of now he's reading his Jesus Calling every morning and getting more involved. So... Now I can have these conversations with him when I have a aha spiritual moment because now he kind of gets it instead of rolling his eyes at me, looking at me like I'm crazy. Um, so for me, what I noticed is the closer in the relationship that you get with God in your prayer, in your daily talking, um, in your communication, and you start to build that intimate relationship with God, the enemy does not like that. <laughs> the enemy does not like it. Michelle shaking her head. She knows what I mean. <laughs> put it in the chat, girlfriend. Put it in the chat. Um, the enemy definitely does not like that. So how does he show up? I'm going to read some stuff to you that I've been reading the last couple of days that I just thought was, oh my gosh, so aha. Um, the enemy is working overtime the closer that you get to God because he's not liking what's happening. He's losing his control. He's losing his way. Um, so I read it. I think it was in Lisa Turkish. I think it was the Abide app that Elise had me reading one day. Um, and it's, wait, the best yes. Wait a minute, hold on, because I put things all over the place. Oh, okay. Um, how, when we are closer to to God and we are feeling good about where we want to go, that's when we start to step out of our comfort zone, right? That's when we start to try and do things that we normally wouldn't do. Um, and I was reading this app and they were talking about venturing into the deep water versus the shallow water. And when we are scared um, and when we are fearful, we like to stay in the shallow water. Right? We like to say where it's comfortable, we'll get our feet wet, we'll kind of hang out there. Nothing happens in shallow water. There's nothing there. There's no treasure there. There's nothing going on there. It's just you standing in some water, getting your feet a little bit stuck in the sand, not moving far, right? However, if we venture out into the deeper water, that's where the treasures are found. 
That's where the freedom lies. That's where we feel different. So that's the enemy trying to put all of that fear and all of that anxiety into you, making you doubt everything because you're getting closer to God and he's feeling that and he doesn't like that. So I want to share with you guys, and I'm going to read from a book that I am now reading that I love. Um, and I have a shelf filled with books. Thanks to Elise and Blair. I am now a reader. Never ever was before, but um, I have a stack of books that sit on my couch in my office behind me. This is like my prayer spot. That's where I hang out. Um, in the morning, I have a, a, co a cozy blanket that I hang out with there. Um, my um, Jesus Calling is there. My phone is there with my Bible apps. I just have a whole, a whole bunch of stuff going on. And my husband now knows, do not bother me from six to seven. Do not talk to me. I'm busy. <laughs> I'm working on up here before I can do anything else. So a book that was recommended to me, um, raise your hand if any of you, like do a little raise of the hand, if any of you have ever watched the movie The War Room. Leslie, you watched it? Type in the comments if you've seen it. Um, the War Room is um, a movie that was recommended to me in my life group when I was having a real, real difficult time in my marriage. Um, it's kind of like the power of the praying wife. Um, she's having a real difficult time um, in her marriage and the War Room talks about prayer and the power of prayer and how she was able to kind of get the enemy out and kind of have the life that God really wanted her to have. So this book is based on the movie, The War Room. So it's called Fevrant by Priscilla Shriver. And it's a woman's battle plan for serious, specific, and strategic prayer. So I read something in here this morning that was really, really interesting. And I actually read it out loud to my husband. And he was like, oh my God, you're right. You're so right. So just bear with me. I just want to go through this with you guys for a little bit because this was really enlightening to me. We pray because our own solutions don't work. And because prayer deploys, activates, and fortifies us against the attacks of the enemy. We pray because we're serious about taking back the ground that he has sought to take from us. That's what we do. And I hope that's what you do or what you've come here to be renewed in doing. But make no mistake, this enemy will seek to discourage you from doing it. Dissuade you, disarm you by putting distance of prayer in your mouth. He wants to see you passionless, powerless, and prayerless, and quiet. So when I have a difficult time um, journaling, or I'm in a spot where I'm like, I don't know, God's just not talking to me. That's all of that doubt that I'm putting in my head that uh, he's putting there for me. <laughs> That's what's happening. Um, and prayer, because prayer is the divinely obtained mechanism that leads you into the heart and the power and the victory of Christ, he knows you'll remain defeated and undone without it, tired and overwhelmed, inching forward, but mostly backward, trying to figure out why the hope and enthusiasm you feel in church doesn't follow you to the four walls that you live in. And if I were your enemy, that's exactly what I would want. I'd want to make you devalue the most potent weapons in your arsenal. I'd strategize against you using careful calculated methods to disorient and defeat you. In fact, his approach makes so much de devilish sense that it's exactly what he does do in real life under the umbrella of deception. So it talks about... This, I love this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read to you guys really quickly these 10 points of strategy and how they're used against us because this to me was like, oh my gosh, exactly. Um, after boiling down to all the answers, the most common categories of response that I ended up with and what I believe are the top 10 favorite strategies to go against your belief. Strategy number one, he wants to attack against your passion. He seeks to dim your whole desire for prayer, dull your interest in spiritual things, 
and downplay the potency of your most strategic weapons. Strategy number two, he goes against your focus. He disguises himself and manipulates your perspective so you end up focusing on the wrong culprit, directing your weapons at the wrong enemy, against your identity. He magnifies your insecurities, right? Leading you to doubt what God says about you and to disregard what he's given you. He's going to go against your family. He wants to disintegrate your family, dividing your home, rendering it chaotic, restless, and unfruitful. So the more that I was getting closer to God and to the truth of what he wanted for me, the more fighting was going on in my household. And I was like, what the heck is going on here? I'm trying to do something good here. What's going on? Um, but that's what happens. Let, let, me just, let me just disrupt this for you. Um, strategy number five, against your confidence. He constantly reminds you of your past mistakes and bad choices, hoping to convince you that you're under God's judgment rather than under the blood. Okay, now strategy number six, this is big for us guys. This has to do with our business. Strategy number six, against your calling. He amplifies fear, worry, and anxiety until they're the loudest voices in your head, causing you to deem the adventure to follow God too risky to attempt. Oh my God, so does that with me. So does that with me. Um, against your purity, he tries to tempt you towards certain sins, convincing you that you can tolerate them without risking any consequences, knowing the only wedge distance between you and God. Against your rest and contentment, he hopes to overload your life and schedule, listen to this, pressuring you to constantly push beyond your limits, never feeling permission to say no. Oh my God, who the heck does that happen to? <laughs> Okay, we're almost there. We're on strategy nine of ten. Strategy nine, against your heart. He uses every opportunity to keep old wounds fresh in your mind, knowing that anger and hurt and bitterness and unforgiveness will continue to roll the damage forward. Strategy number ten, against your relationships. He creates disruption and disunity within your circle of friends and within the shared community of the body of Christ. How crazy is that? So I thought that if this is happening to me and I'm growing in my life spiritually, and if you guys are all on this journey with me, then you must be experiencing the same things that I'm experiencing. Um, so guys, unmute yourself, share with me. Is this, is this you? How is this appearing in your life? Is this something that you're realizing? What, what's your walk like? Hey there. Hi, Michelle. Hi there. I have definitely been experiencing a lot of um, conversations in my head that aren't true. And mm -hmm. I've done the Elise thing. Not today, Satan, not today. <laughs> and, and it works. It works. It's wonderful. Um, you just, yeah, you have to reprogram. Don't believe everything you think. Mm -hmm. That is, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I have a sign that says that up on my wall because um, so many times people think, well, I thought it, and so it's got to be correct. Um, I'm starting... A Bible study next week on the book um, Lies Women Believe, the uh -huh. new and revised, updated version. And I'm just so looking forward to that too, because it is Satan that puts all those lies into our head, into our hearts, mm -hmm. and we can either respond to it or say, not today, Satan, not today. Right, exactly. So, thank you. Can you type the name of that book in the comments and the author? Certainly, so, I do that. So we can yes. all, um, I, you know, I always love a good book. <laughs> yes, I'll do that. Thanks. Thank you. Welcome. Anybody else want to jump on and share? I 
figured if this is happening to me, it must be happening to you guys too. Okay, I'll share. Hello. Hello, how are y'all today? Very good, how are you? I'm good. Um, you're right, the more and closer you get to God, the more Satan tries to work his way in, in all areas, no matter what it is, relationship, business, friendship, every aspect. I'm constantly saying, nope, not exactly Elisa's words, but it's like, nope, get away, get out of my head. I'm not listening to you. All right, God, take the noise from me. Focus me again. Show me the light at the end of the tunnel that you need me to be at. And if I have to do that a hundred times a day, I do it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, you have to do it. We have to fight against that. Um, yes, he's strong. He's very strong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we don't let him win. We just don't let him win. That's all. Right. And I'm, I'm like you. My husband actually is also, um, we walk the journey together. So that's been a, a very good blessing for us. It, it makes it a lot easier when we're both in sync. Um, so he can look at me if he's starting to get down or the devil's working his way into his life, then I'm there to support him and vice versa. But yeah. you are yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. but very good point. Cause that happens to us too. Like, it's like, okay, there's some days where we're on the same page and then there's some days where, you know, I'm down and he's picking me up or he's down and I'm picking him up and you know, that's just the, the way it works. Yeah. Um, and that's in all, all aspects too business everything so but yeah I'm, I'm reading some of the books too um so we'll see how that goes but thanks for letting me jump on yes absolutely thanks for sharing thank you so much anybody else want to share in different areas that they see this happening and you know an, another thing um you know, for me is that I have to, I realize when that happens, um, instead of getting quiet, those are the times where you need to journal. Those are the times where you need to go find yourself a Bible app plan or, or do something. Um, mm -hmm. That's also something that I've done um, in the last week. I have some great apps on here on my Bible app that I'm loving. Um, some of them I'm doing by myself. Some of them I'm doing with some of you. Um, created on purpose for purpose is one that I'm using in my Bible app that I love. Um, launch out into the deep and don't look back. Those are ones that I've also done. Um, Psalm 10. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. Exactly. Dead. Absolutely. Elise, are you there to hop on and, and share? I know that this is definitely something that shows up um, with you also. I don't know if you're still there. I told her to get this started for me, and if she needed to hop off, she could. So I'm not quite sure if she's still here with us. Oh, I may I break yes. in one more time i know that you had mentioned um the jesus calling daily devotional and i do have that book i did download the app to my ipad just love it um there were a couple days that i copied and pasted the the day to um, my facebook page and um and then i quit doing that and my mom called and said, oh, please put it up back onto Facebook because, you know, it was really touching her. It was saving her the time, the steps of going and getting the book. But um, we never know how doing little things like that can help others also. Um, also, the Think and Grow Rich book by Napoleon Hill, I believe it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, he has another book that um, I can't remember the name of it, but it speaks about um, how, how the evil one can really have a hold of us and how, um, how we really have to battle against that daily. So that's something that you might want to look into also. I can write that, the name of it 
in also when I find yes. it in my bookshelf. Yes, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, as I'm responding to you right now, honey, I'm favor by um, Priscilla. There you go. There you go. Okay. Anybody else want to jump on and share with us? I know today's the last day that we're all meeting together. So I thought maybe we'd share some aha moments or some struggles or some things that, you know, kind of came up to the surface for us. trying to think I know that I had other things in here that I wanted to quote for you guys okay I'll speak up one more time okay Michelle. The, the book is called outwitting the devil it's um from Napoleon Hill oh, outwitting okay. the devil. and I, not only in our um, relationships does the devil talk or put those bad thoughts in our mind how many times do we think we're just not worthy of of success mm -hmm. of, uh, or oh they're not going to be interested or oh they don't have the money for this we can't judge we have to just let go let god let them decide what is good and and try to cancel out the the negative thoughts that Satan is putting into our mind by calling upon the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Those are my three <laughs> cents worth. I haven't really spoken up all these other sessions, but now I'm just blabbing. So. Good. No, it's good. <laughs> it's all blabbing. It's all good information. <laughs> Thanks. Love it. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm going through my journal and seeing where the great stuff I've put in here. Um, that maybe I can share with you all. It was talking, I know I was reading something where it was talking about um, listening to your intuition um, and tuning into that rather than listening to all of the thoughts that go into your head. You know, sometimes we overthink things and we want to second guess things um, rather than just listening to that, that, that gut feeling. Um, and that also could be the enemy trying to get into the way, get in the way of, of making decisions and doing things where we're constantly second guessing ourselves and constantly, you know, not feeling worthy or not feeling that we um, can accomplish what we need to accomplish. You know, God has given us gifts, talents um, that are very unique to us. Um, so, you know, sometimes we don't want to see those ourselves. We want to think that, um, oh, maybe, maybe I really don't have that gift in town, or maybe that's really not something special about me, or maybe, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe other people don't see it that way. You know, constantly always second guessing ourselves, but you know, if, if we put on the glasses of, um, of faith, hey, Joel, um, of, of faith and really what it is that the way that God sees us and how does he see us? Um, and that's really what we need to focus on and what we need to look on, look, look at. Um, Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce Myers is, is fantastic. Yes, it is. Um, so what do I do when that happens? When what happens, Lauren? Lauren, I'm sorry, I don't know what you mean by what can I do when that happens. So if you want to unmute yourself and chat with me. All right. Sorry, Hannah. I don't know what I don't know what you mean. I think possibly what she is asking is. What do I do when I get the negative thoughts that are going through my mind? 
Mm -hmm. I have a, um, a toolbox of things that I use. <laughs> and every day it may be something different that works and speaks to me that day. Um, sometimes it's going into a Bible app for me. Sometimes it's going on YouTube. Um, and it's looking at something motivational that's going to speak to me. Um, Lisa Nichols, for any of you that do not follow Lisa Nichols um, on YouTube, I'll type her name in here. Lisa, N-I-C-H-O-L-S. Um, she is awesome. She is one of the um, writers of The Secret. And she now has a whole um, YouTube, I think it's Mastering, Master of the Minds or, or Master of motiv Motivating the Mind, Motivating the Minds. Um, is um, her YouTube little show that she does every single day. Um, she's somebody that I will go to. And sometimes for me, it's music. Um, sometimes music is what works for me. So you have to try different things, Lauren, to see what it is that's going to click for you because it's different for everybody. And to be honest, for me, every day it's something different. You know, some days the Bible app will speak to me and other days I'm like, okay, you know what? I just have to tune everything out. I got to put some music in my ear. Um, sometimes it's going for a walk. Um, you know, it, it all depends. You gotta have to try different things to see what it is that works best for you. If that helps. Anybody else want to jump on and share before we hop off? We're hitting 430 now. Oh, Gina, you're going to share. I see you moving your camera. <laughs> Are you unmuting yourself, Gina? <laughs> You're not, huh, Gina? <laughs> I thought I was gonna get my little sister to speak, not today. <laughs> All right, I want to be not so sensitive in life. It takes over me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, I jump on and I, what, what is that? Oh, the abide app. Abide. Yes, yes, yes. Um, not to be so sensitive in life. Yeah. It, it, it's hard, Lauren. Um, that's a, um, that's a, that's a, something that you can work on. I, for me, that would be YouTube videos in my ear. That, that's what would do it for me. When I get in that spot where I don't believe in something, I have to have somebody put in my ear that that's a lie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Julia's son's in the back <laughs> saying, Mom, don't put me on camera. <laughs> Mom, don't embarrass me. Um, okay, so I just hope that um, this kind of made you guys realize that this is part of the way that it works. Um, there's always a, um, as Elise says it, there's um, a break, a breakthrough before there's a, Gina, help me. What's the saying again? She's, I'm going to make her talk if it kills her. <laughs> there's always a breakdown before there's a breakthrough. Um, so that's what happens when we're getting closer to a breakthrough in our life. Um, that's what happens. Things are going to try and get in the way, but if we fight through that, we're going to see that it's always, always worth it. So I hope that this helps some of you guys um, get the book. I think it's an awesome book. Like, I mean, literally I got that and I'm only on page uh, 17. So <laughs> a lot of information um, in 17 pages. So, um, Again, I put the title in the, um, in the comments if you guys want to go back and look. But um, this is pretty powerful. It actually was recommended to me by three people. And the third person that just recommended it to me the other day, I'm like, okay, you're the third person. I think it's something I'm meant to read. Um, all right, everybody. So have a great, a great you know, weekend. Have a great um, end of the month. And um, hopefully we will all still be chatting in Journey into Freedom or that we friended each other on Facebook and we can chat that way. Um, anybody that wants to give me, um, you know, wants some pointers, message me on Messenger and I'll, and I'll give you some of the pointers that I use. All right, everybody. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.